And now for today's sermon. Uh, this comes from the book of James, chapter 3, and it says, Oh no, said Piglet, I don't know how we're going to get him out of the hole. Oh, said Pooh, I shouldn't have eaten that much honey. I'm, excuse me, excuse me, y yes, uh, y yes you? Excuse me, Vicar, S sorry to interrupt, but um, uh, Squirrel here, I, I don't think you're reading James, because it's different from what I've got over here. In, in fact, it sounds like you're reading um, from Winnie the Pooh, the book. Oh, <laughs> I think you're right. That's not the Bible. <laughs> I know worries, Vicar, just keeping you on your toes, making sure you, you're saying what the Bible says. <laughs> Thank you. Well, greetings. Um, so um, today we're looking at uh, this important thing is that we need to check what the preacher says is what the passage says. To check what the preacher says is what the passage says. We want to make sure the sermon's coming from God's word and not uh, just the preacher's head or, or something else. I remember when I was uh, a Christian, I'd been a Christian probably about a year and exploring and visiting different churches in my village. And, and one, one church was really exciting. All the young people were going there. It had uh, music. It was unlike any church I'd, I'd known before, not very traditional. Um, but the sermons were very interesting. But I couldn't, we never really opened up the Bible. And I never really understood where the preacher got it from. It, it sounded really great. But... It also seemed to fade away pretty quickly. Um, it didn't feel like a real meal that kept me going. Uh, it would be very exciting, but come the next day, it would have fizzled out. And I learned that what they were speaking about sounded good, but it wasn't God's word. You see, if it's not God's word, then it's just one person's opinion against another. And they could be saying totally, two totally different things. See, what happens is one person and another person sit under God's authority as he speaks to, to all of us. Let me say this as well. As someone that preaches, it's very helpful if I know that people in the congregation are holding open the Bible and seeing uh, what uh, I'm saying is there. Because sometimes there's difficult passages that I might want to glance over. Sometimes there's things that uh, I might be tempted to say something else. But if I know everyone's looking at God's word and saying God's word is the authority, then that makes us all sit underneath the Bible. This is Charlie. For Charlie, the sermon was something like a thing that just washed over you, that you kind of just soaked up. As the preacher preached, um, you soaked up some of it like a sponge just by being there. Um, he hoped it would make a difference. He enjoyed uh, the stories um, and the humor and the preacher if he was funny. But he found it a bit awkward after someone asked him if, who hadn't been there, what was the sermon about? Or well, even if the preacher was very clear, he could throw out some one-liners, but none of them stuck and he soon forgot about it. And there's no way ever he'd be able to tell you what the Bible passages had to do with the sermon. This is Chelsea. Chelsea is a great thinker. She looks up uh, on the church's webpage the passages that are coming up in the next few weeks and she reads them in the weeks before. She really begins thinking, I wonder what this passage is going to have to say. Or how's the preacher going to um, get this, to apply this to our lives? She sometimes rather tiresomely might even go up to whoever's preached afterwards and say to them, I'm just trying to figure out, I couldn't understand what your second point is about or, or how it came from that passage. Preachers aren't used to that. So we had Charlie and we had Chelsea. Uh, did you see the different reactions? See, Charlie was lazy, uh, but Chelsea was wise. She was listening, listening actively. Now, some people think that uh, when you come into church, uh, it's, you, if, you, if it's cold, you take off your coat and you hang it on a coat rack or hang it over a pew 
and, and then you, t you take your zipper and take your brain out and you stick it down and you just sort of listen. Oh. You see, that's not the way, way we to listen. We listen to listen actively, testing and questioning, is this true or not? We should do this when we're watching TV or watching something on the internet or reading something and we do it when we're looking at God's word. We're listening and saying, is this true? Is this what the Bible is saying? Uh, we don't want to be brainwashed and take all things in or just accept what the preacher says because he's wearing a dog collar or something like that. We want to say, actually, who's higher than the vicar or the preacher or whoever's up at the front? It's God's word and God's the one that's doing the speaking. So how do you check what the preacher says? First of all, practically, it's helpful to have the passage open. Uh, I also have to take notes sometimes because my mind gets distracted. I might never ever be able to read my notes afterwards, but at least I'm following. Sometimes actually I even doodle, but I am listening and, and following points. Uh, some people think it's easier just to not be distracted with paper, but just to sit and listen. But whatever we, we do, we want to make sure that we're listening and seeing what the preacher is saying is what the passage is saying. Well, okay, goodbye. That's, that's all for today. Um, and uh, wait a minute. Do you see what I just did? I just gave me a, my opinion, but I didn't even open the Bible. Listen to this from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Um, when Paul came to see people in Corinth, this is what he said about his message. Now, let me just say the context of Corinth, there were people that were brilliant speakers. They could talk about nothing, but do it really well, like some actors we know. Um, and this is what he says. When I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear, with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise, persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but in God's power. And so when we have the Bible opened up and God speaking to us, the power of God is unleashed and it will transform your lives. It's the Holy Spirit that does the work, um, uh, not people's arguments or clever intellectual thought. You don't have to be smart to listen to a sermon. There are lots of clever people that don't want to have anything to do with God. But you want to listen to God and say, uh, as the preacher is speaking, is he saying what the passage is saying? What is God's word saying to me? Because the Holy Spirit, God's Spirit, will do the work with the word. Um, another passage in Hebrews talks about the Bible being a double-edged sword, um, piercing our hearts. It, it speaks to us. Um, he has the reference for you to have a look. And so we need to pray as we sit down in church and keep the, the preacher accountable by looking at God's word saying, I'm not listening to uh, Simon or Scott or whoever is speaking. I'm, I'm listening to God and I want to see what the preacher is saying, what the passage says. And God, please can you help your spirit to get it to talk to me and, and change me. Uh, so we've got some practical steps uh, to take. I'm going to put them up on the screen uh, now. Now time for Squirrel Dundee's Top Tips. Look up the passage in the Bible so you can follow it when it's being read. Listen for the main point of the passage. It is often repeated or a theme that runs throughout the text. What do you think the writer of the passage wants to achieve in its hearers? Pray and ask God to teach us. Squirrel Dundee, signing off. If I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. Good day and goodbye.